Well, good day, folks. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's a cracking day up here in Tamworth today, and we're going to go for a bit of a ride. Uh, a few of the boys from work uh, got together, and we're going to go for a ride here from Tamworth up through some uh, dirt roads, end up at uh, Bendemir Pub for lunch. So uh, it's going to be a cracking ride. Like I said, it's a great day, and uh, we're just going to meet up with the guys, fuel up, get everything ready, and we're going to hit the road. Joining me on the rod today is Barney on his Africa Twin, Ryan on his KLR 650, Lachlan on his KLR 650, and Matthew on his Himalayan 411. Isn't this a cracking day though? Have a look at it. She's oversized. Okay, we're turning again, left, just up here. Turning again, and this is where the gravel starts. No, this is not the uphill bit. That's after lunch. I think you'll be right, Barney. It's only a really short little pinch, but it's about 18% for about uh, half a kilometre, I think. I love riding out here on these country roads, and you come up over crest of a little hill like that, and the next valley opens up in front of you. I really love that. There's some really good roads out this way, guys. We should uh, do a few more rides. I've done, I've, I can't say that I've done all of them, but I've done quite a few out this way, and it's, um, gee, there's some good shit out here.
Hey, here we go, a little bit of water. Not much. Why? Oh, what have I done? I think we've... Nah, we're on the wrong road. Yeah, actually, it doesn't matter. We're still drying up, but it's, uh... Yeah, we'll get us there a little bit quicker. Nah, not really. I saw the sign back there, and, uh... We should have turned, but we didn't. We're on... I think we're on Settlers Road instead of Yarramon Bully. It was at this point that through the comms came the sound of rye and dry retching. So naturally I had to ask the question. What's happened there? What's going on? Oh, oh good idea. And to top it off, through all that excitement, I managed to miss another turn. Ah, uh, we're going the wrong way again. Follow the red line, Phil. Not the one on your taco, the one on your phone. Let's go this way, why not? No, no we're not, we're going straight here. Yep, this is the one. No, we want this one. So, you haven't got me? So you can't hear me? I oh, say so you can't hear me? Oh, well, I don't know what's going on. Well, I can hear you guys perfectly, yeah. Just be careful, you've been up here before, haven't you? Yep, all right, just be careful, it's a public road. Stick to the left, I don't want to see anyone go off the side. All right, no, because you know how bad it is. Yep, no, nah. all right, so just keep your distance. Don't f around and we'll see you at the top. The road connecting Watson's Creek to nearby Manila via Bungendore Spur was first proposed in August 1911. After some toing and froing between the local council and the state government over funding, as well as some contributions from the Watson's Creek residents, Bungendore Spur Road was finally finished in October 1914. 
So Barney, how did you end up riding through bloody cow Did you aim for it? Oh, you're going to have to wash that boot before we get into the pub. This is the type of stuff I like riding. This is the good stuff. Uh, yep. Ah, Sandy. Go through it again and wash your boot. Whoa, that's the switchback. That's the switchback. Some widening of the road was done in the mid-1920s and 30s, but the use of the road by some as a stock route meant the road was continuously in poor state. Additionally, the fact that it was near impossible for trucks to pass each other meant that Bone Door Spur Road never reached its full potential as a means of bringing goods from Watson's Creek to the market in Manila. Oh yeah, she's a long way down. There's a section along here somewhere, I don't exactly remember where it is, but there's a car down there. Pothole right at the exit of that turn on the left. Another one just here on the left hand turn. Got more sand and water. We've just about caught up to that U. Yep. Oh, it's a different you. Someone else. Nah, oh, yeah, I think he's going to let us past. Uh, I hope so. Yep, yep, we're going past. So there's the rain that we had the other day, Ryan. That's the rain we had the other day. Those creeks don't normally flow. Hey, this should be good. Go around it. Tin was discovered in the New England district in the 1870s and Watson's Creek was one such location to benefit from the discovery. 
tin mining at Watson's Creek was carried out for at least 100 years. From the Evening News, Sydney, Monday 26 August 1872, Mr W.J. Cotton of the Baltic Hotel reports the discovery of a valuable load of tin at Grant's Den, Watson's Creek near Bendemere, New England, specimens of which he has now on exhibition. The samples are of a most extraordinary and rich character, the tin completely intersecting and running through them. The land, of which he has secured 640 acres, is situated on a hill overlooking Watson's Creek, which abounds with drift tin, and large masses of the conglomerate with which the metal is associated abounds on the surface in blocks of three or four hundred weight each. The specimens must command the attention of parties interested in mining. From the Walker Witness, Saturday 29th of July, 1899, tin mining near Bendemeer. On Monday, some information regarding the tin fields near Bendemeer was furnished to Mr. Edward Jones, PM, Mining Warden, by Mr. P. O. Murray of Haining, Bendemeer. Mr. Murray says that somewhat extensive deposits of tin are being encountered on Longford Run, about 15 miles from the township, and that a few diamonds have also been taken out. A small syndicate is now prospecting in the vicinity for diamonds. Five families have been permanently employed raising tin ore at the Giant's Den, and at Watson's Creek, four or five other parties are now engaged in a similar occupation. At the latter place, Messrs. W.C. Murray and party have a nice patch and are raising good tin. And the opinion is expressed that if the place were properly worked, a good living would, at the present price of tin, be found for from 50 to 100 people. The stuff raised on the field, which is an old one and has been worked after a fashion during the past 30 years, has often been assayed and results as high as 74% have been obtained. I've got some twisties coming up here, guys, so just take it easy. In 1914, reports of sightings of a lioness at Watson's Creek were widely circulated in newspapers throughout the state and beyond. From the Tamworth Daily Observer, Tuesday 12th of May, 1914, Bush people scared. A sensational story comes from Watson's Creek concerning a lioness which is said to be roving the bush there. One settler states positively that he saw the animal and it is a lioness. The mailman now carries a Winchester repeater rifle and takes two dogs with him. The impression made of the animal's padded feet is about the size of the palm of a man's hand. People are scared and refuse to send their children to school. If it is a lioness it may be one which escaped from the circus down Murrundi way some time ago. By following the ranges, the animal could come into the Watson Creek District. In case you guys are interested, there's a good little swimming hole down in here.
So as the boys and I head into the pub for a feed and a drink, I'll say farewell for now. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, then please consider subscribing to the channel and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things Little Red Rooster. Until then, see you later.